Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. We'll get to the unboxing in just a second, but there's something I realised as I was about to upload this video. It's video number 200! <laughs> Woohoo! Unbelievable! 200 videos! I'm pretty excited about that and I'm pretty proud of all the stuff I've put up here on the Esoteric Order of Gamers channel. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, I started the Esoteric Order of Gamers over five years ago now, and it's grown into something that has become a bit of an, an obsession for me, something that's dominating my life in many ways. And um, I hope that some of that passion that I have for it and for games in general is coming across to you because I think tabletop gaming and board gaming is one of the greatest hobbies known to humanity and I want to share that passion. So thanks very much for watching and thank you very much for your continued support of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. I'm really glad you're here to watch all the stuff that I'm producing. Thank you for that. So let's get on to video number 200. Here it comes. Enjoy. Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to another Joy of Unboxing. And today we're looking at Kill Team. Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team by Games Workshop. And it's their latest skirmish level game set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And as you can see, this one, it's quite a heavy box. This one has got lots of terrain in there. There's 10 models from the Adeptus Mechanicus and the Gene Stealer Cults factions. This game is all about fast skirmish level covert operations by elite units. It's apparently quite fast playing. It takes the basics of Warhammer 40,000 and then jazzes it all up a little bit. So let's have a look inside and see what you get in a box of Kill Team. Oh, look, great side to the box there. Look, we've got the Adeptus Mechanicus and the Gene Stealer Cults facing off against each other. Off comes the shrink wrap. And I must say, it's a pleasure to see a good solid box instead of these ones with the cardboard slip cover thing, which are all very well, but there's nothing beats a solid box. Ah, yeah. Go. Oh look, I wonder what this game is called. Oh that's right. Oh look, it's just a lovely piece of cardboard with a nice illustration on it that obviously protects the top of the box from all the miniatures underneath. And talking about the top of the box, look at the inside of the top of the box. It's orange. That's great. I love that beautiful design touch. So we've got some bases. We've even thrown in some Ziploc bags. And some very finely detailed sprues. You can see there's tiny little pieces, there's little heads and look, half arms and legs and uh, so fiddly. That's going to take quite a while to put together. And that looks like the Adeptus Mechanicus. These look like the Gene Stealer Colts. And as you can see, every single millimetre of space just about has been taken up with bits of plastic. Look at all the little heads in a row. Aren't they cute? That's that. Here's our meaty terrain. And of course, uh, it's great to get lots of terrain because you can use this for games of Shadow War Armageddon. Oh no, no one plays Shadow War Armageddon anymore, do they? That sort of didn't last very long. But you could use it for Necromunda and you could also use it for Warhammer 40,000. More Gothic stuff. It's a strange mixture between medieval Gothic and industrial pseudo mechanical tech. Wow, look at that. This is pretty good value actually. I mean, you know, the box isn't cheap. It's like 200 bucks, but there's quite a lot of stuff in here, especially considering Games Workshop's usual prices. But then that's what they do. You see, they get the, you in with these starter sets and you go, oh, this is great. And then you start buying all the expansions and stuff. And before you know it, I mean, I bought the Age of Sigma starter set, which was $210 New Zealand. And it's great. It's packed full of fantastic stuff. And I love the Night Haunt figures. They're really, really nice. Now I want to get more Night Haunt figures. I looked at the price of the Black Coach the other day. It's almost $200 all by itself. <sighs> I almost had a heart attack. So, yep, they get you in, but be prepared to give them a hotline to your wallet. Back to Kill Team. And it's another piece of cardboard. In fact, it's the same piece of cardboard all over again. That's very weird. And then under here you have lots of cards. Look, cards, cards, some nice dice, another base, one of these uh, things that I don't use because I use a tape measure. 
Mm, some cardboard counters, some books, a very thick manual. Nice thick manual, look at this. Soft cover, but you know, can't have everything. Oh, so many rules and fluff and stuff. Look, there's lots of missions. Uh, there's a campaign system in this as well. Wow, absolutely chockers. And the exciting thing about this, which I'm very impressed with, is that it seems to have the uh, rules for all the different factions. So if you've got some Necrons lying around or some um, look, Harlequins, you know, whatever models you have lying about, you can make a kill team out of them and start playing, which is brilliant. Of course, there are expansion sets available for kill team already, which give you specialized little kill teams with terrain and things like that. And at the bottom of this, we've got a map. So I'll get rid of some of this shrink wrap and then I'll show you this stuff in detail. And here's our board. And you can see they've cheated slightly because this is actually a photograph of the plastic board that you can buy. A board that I have never been that enamored of. And the reason is, is that it uses elements that look like they belong on the side of buildings. And they've used that in a sort of two-dimensional floor kind of thing. It looks all kind of too busy. Your opinion may differ, of course. You may love this board, think it's great. Um, I just think it's a, a little bit too busy for a floor uh, kind of board. Um, but then again, you put buildings on it, who knows, it may look great. This board is 22 inches by 30 inches, which is sort of your standard size for a game of Kill Team. Though, if you have more players, of course, and more models, you'll need a larger size. But, nice to see a board uh, for a Games Workshop game, uh, battle game, that's quite unusual. Um, again, the core manual, which is great, I've had a little look through it now. It's mostly all the stats for all the heaps and heaps of miniatures you can buy for Warhammer 40,000, so you can repurpose them for Kill Team. And that's great, because I've got lots of uh, Warhammer 40k figures lying around from various games, even though I don't play that game much at all. Well, actually, I don't play it at all. Um, so I can repurpose them for this game, which is fantastic. Uh, these are our two sheets of counters that come with the game. Which are quite handy. There's a begin here piece of card. There's a little booklet for the Devoted Sons, who are your Gene Steeler cult uh, team. A little bit of background on them and some photos. Um, again, I'll probably be using the figures that I've got from Death Watch Overkill for a little while before I get uh, around to painting these ones. And there's the Adapt Adeptus Mechanicus figures, Gamma Zul 881 Skitari Kill Team. That's their little booklet. I don't have any Adeptus Mechanicus figures, but again, you could proxy anything really. At least until you paint these. And there's a very thick book, which is all about putting the miniatures together. Um, there's a whole lot of stats here in different languages, which is kind of unusual for Games Workshop. But most of this is putting together the terrain and the figures. Whew, that'll keep you busy. Look at all that. There's a couple of weekends work there. Uh, we've got stat cards. Here they are. Quite plain, but easy to read. And lots of blank stat cards as well, so you can fill in the stats on your own kill team people. We've got faction cards. These are the general faction cards. I quite like this whole orange and black scheme they've got going on. It's quite nice. I'd love to see more artwork on these, though. it will just really jazz them up. At the moment, they're text only. It's a little bit boring. And since Games Workshop has so much great artwork, it'd be nice to put some on the cards. One thing they've done with this, though, is that the faction-specific cards... Ha! Ah, there's the rub. You've got to buy faction-specific cards if you want their special factions. Uh, they've got a picture on the other side, which is nice, and just text on the other side there. Here's your special dice. And what's this? What's this? This is a... One, two, three, four... This is a ten-sided dice in a Games Workshop game. Outrageous. Lovely ten-sided dice there, and some really nice black and orange six-siders. Love those. Really nice dice. I think that's it. I think that's all the stuff. There's the lid. There it is. Well, it's a pretty impressive box, isn't it? Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team from Games Workshop, the starter set for skirmish combat. And um, I've, of course, already got Necromunda, which I love, but that's about gang fights. This is more about Warhammer 40,000 factions uh, going into uh, battle with each other. And there's a lot of missions, specific narrative play missions in the book as well. So I'm quite looking forward to giving this a go. And of course, when we do give it a go, 
I'll film a battle report so uh, you can check it out yourself. But that's it for the moment. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Esoteric Order of Gamers. We're at orderofgamers.com. Go check it out. Of course, there's this YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the social media channels. We're also on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.